Yes, I've complained a lot about how slow progress is in the foundations of physics, but just among you and I, the reason I complain so much is that I'm hoping to annoy physicists into action. I'm actually hopeful that in the next decade or so, we'll make progress on many fundamental questions, not least thanks to artificial intelligence. So today, I want to have a look at the biggest open problems in the foundations of physics, what their status is, and how likely it is we're going to see progress soon, starting with quantum gravity. We have quantum theories for all the known interactions except gravity. That's a problem because we know that particles do have both quantum properties and they're affected by gravity. So we need a theory that combines both. Physicists first realized this problem in the 1930s. So it's been unsolved now for about 90 years. We simply do not have a theory to describe what's going on. So far, this has made it any difference in practice because in the cases when an object is small enough so that we can measure its quantum behavior, the gravitational field is too tiny to measure. For a long time, physicists' efforts to solve this problem focused on developing the theory for quantum gravity. This gave rise to approaches like string theory and loop quantum gravity and asymptotically safe gravity and some others. This started in the 1970s. And it's always been a rather philosophical enterprise, really, in that the people who worked on it didn't actually think these theories could ever be tested. They seem to have believed that requiring mathematical consistency alone would be enough. But there are many consistent theories of universes that we just don't live in. Maths alone was never going to work, and physicists seem to have finally understood this. This is why, in the past 20 years, this story has changed. Physicists have slowly begun to realize that it's possible to experimentally test quantum gravity. There are two different ways of doing this. One is to look for evidence out there in the cosmos. This could be, for example, in the aftermath of the Big Bang, where quanta of gravity should have been produced or in black hole observations. The other is to try and test quantum gravity in the laboratory. The challenging part for laboratory tests is that you have to bring massive particles into quantum states so that both the quantum effects and the gravitational effects are strong enough to measure. However, the technology for this is rapidly improving. I doubt that the astrophysical evidence will ever be decisive, but I do think that laboratory tests will advance the field in the next decade or so, and there will almost certainly be a Nobel Prize for it. The second big unsolved problem is dark matter and dark energy. Let's start with dark matter. This too was first discovered in the 1930s, so it's certainly not a new problem. The issue is that we have a lot of observations that we can't explain with Einstein's theory of gravity, general relativity, plus the matter that we already know know of. It just doesn't work. We have gravitational lenses that are stronger than they ought to be, galaxies that rotate too fast or that move too fast, the structures in the universe form faster than they should, the cosmic microwave background has patterns that we can't explain, and so on. So we have solid evidence. But evidence of what? One way to explain these observations is by postulating a new type of matter, the dark matter, that we can measure only through its gravitational pull. This was the original idea in any case. The alternative explanation is that we need to modify the laws of gravity at large distances. This alternative is unpopular among theorists because it's difficult to change anything about Einstein's theory without breaking it completely. Dark matter is mathematical much easier to deal with. When it comes to dark matter, in the past decades, we've seen two developments, one good, one bad. The good development is that we have better and better data and that tells us more about how dark matter, if it exists, behaves. One of the most interesting findings comes from the James Webb Space Telescope and it's that galaxies and black holes are forming faster than dark matter models predicted. We also now have 
better data on how galaxies rotate, the so-called rotation curves that one can use to infer how dark matter is distributed. This fits better with some types of dark matter theories than with others. Loosely speaking, if dark matter is made of a particle, then a particle with small mass seems to work better because then the density isn't so peaked in the center of galaxies and that fits better with the observations. They have also for some years now been tentative hints that dark matter has some sort of self-interaction. This case has been slowly building but it's not yet watertight. In any case, real progress on the experimental side. Now, if we take all this together, what does it mean? Will we eventually find out what dark matter is? To be honest, I think the chances are slim. This is because if we don't manage to directly measure the particle in a detector here on Earth, I doubt we'll be able to entirely pin down what it is one way or another. And if it's a modification of gravity, dark matter will be near impossible to rule out entirely. That said, I think if artificial intelligence advances somewhat further, there's a real possibility that that'll move us forward. This is because I've slowly become convinced that dark matter slash modified gravity is linked to the question of quantum gravity. That's somewhat of a different story, but it makes me think that there's progress on the way, on the theoretical side. What about dark energy? Dark energy is a fairly new problem in that it was only discovered about 30 years ago. Though I think it's fair to ask whether it really is a problem. Because if dark energy is just constant, then that's a constant of nature, the so-called cosmological constant, and there's no problem to solve. Then again, the recent data seem to say that actually dark energy isn't constant, but it's getting weaker. This and some other related problems in cosmology, like the Hubble tension, are currently very active research areas that are almost entirely driven by data. This makes me think it's very possible that we'll see a major paradigm shift in the fundamental model for the universe in the next decade. Concretely, I suspect that the cosmological principle will be abandoned. The cosmological principle says that the universe is on average the same everywhere were, and I think it's the reason why we're having trouble explaining the expansion of the universe. It could be that the universe is much more varied and that we find ourselves in a somewhat odd place, one with far less matter than on average. Let's move on to the next topic, the origin of the universe, Big Bang, Big Bounce, brain collisions, higher dimensional black holes, or what else it could have been where everything started. It's a question as old as mankind. I believe that humans have always looked at the night sky and wondered where it all comes from. I also believe that they will still ask this question in a thousand years. I suspect that the question of how a universe began will remain unsolvable potentially forever because I can't see how science can ever tackle it. You see, we can use science to find explanations for observations so long as the explanations are simple. In science, you're not allowed to add unnecessary details to an explanation. This often goes under the name of Occam's razor, and you really can't do science without it. Because if you allowed unnecessary additions to your theory, then that would allow adding explanations like God made it and call that science. That is, we need the requirement of simplicity to distinguish science from religion. The problem is that just because an explanation has details that aren't strictly speaking necessary, doesn't mean the explanation is wrong. While some religious beliefs are just wrong, religion isn't per se wrong. It just isn't science. The issue with theories for the origin of the universe is exactly the same. They add unnecessary details. That isn't wrong, but it isn't scientific either. A lot of physicists think that as our observations get better, we'll be able to pin down the details of what happened in the early universe and eventually figure out the story of what really happened. I think that this will remain impossible because the details aren't in the data and they'll never be. That is, there'll be a simplest explanation for our observation, 
but that still won't tell us how the universe began. Science has limits, and this is one of them. And then I have a fifth and final topic, the theory of everything. That's a theory which would not just quantize gravity, but also explain why the particles in the standard model have these particular properties, and that this would be the ultimate and final description of, well, everything in the universe, at least in principle. I don't believe that such a theory exists, so I don't think we're going to make progress on it. However, I do think that there's some deeper explanation for the particle patterns that we see in the standard model of particle physics. Most of the effort to explain those has so far focused on symmetry groups and symmetry breaking. I hope that physicists will soon realize that this just didn't work and that in Instead of starting with the symmetry assumptions, they need to look for an origin of the symmetries themselves. How long is this going to take? Decades. I say this because I don't see any indication whatsoever that physicists are moving on from the prevailing paradigm of symmetry first. So, in summary, I'm most optimistic we'll make progress on quantum gravity and dark energy quite possibly within the next decade or two, followed by dark matter and physics beyond the standard model. Whereas I think that the question of how our universe began would just remain unsolved. For me, the most interesting part of physics has always been that maths and science touches on those deep existential questions of where we came from and what we're made made of. If this video inspired you to learn more about mathematics or science, I want to encourage you to have a look at Brilliant, which will help you make progress no matter what your background knowledge is. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.